Good morning. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, if you have questions about our True Skin Health products, or if you have a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Ultimate Selenium, Ultimate Nightly Essence, any of the longevity products, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also purchase longevity products off our website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog stories and news, uh, we've got blog posts and news stories and videos up at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. If you're an entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, you can help change the world and make some money at the same time. Being your own boss, enjoying all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. If you're the kind of person that likes nutrition, likes the world of health, likes helping people, and you want to make money, you definitely want to check out the Longevity Business Opportunity at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also call the phone team for more information at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with aging skin or hyperpigmented skin, if you're tired of paying for skincare products that are 90 to 95% water and fillers and waxes, never any preservatives, fragrances, filler wax, oil, silicon, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. This is your Common Sense Nutritional Program, where we dive into the fascinating workings of the human body and the role that nutrition can play in keeping it healthy. While the medical model and its its representatives want us to think that the body is so complicated and we humans, we silly little human beings can do nothing to heal chronic disease. And the only answer is drugs and diagnostics and doctor's visits. That's the only way we can stay healthy. We take a different position on this program. We say the body from a health perspective is simple to understand. You feed it, you nutriate it, you eliminate toxicity or at least reduce your exposure to toxicity and that includes sugar. We make sure we're breathing correctly, oxygenating, moving the body all within a context of rest and relaxation. Just common sense, folks. All truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them. That's Galileo Galilei. Galileo. 
from uh, the mathematician and astronomer from the 16th century, the father of modern science and astronomy. He had the nerve to say the church was wrong and the earth was not the center of the universe, and that got him into, into some big trouble. He ended up being threatened with torture. He had to renounce, with, quote, with sincere and unfeigned faith, unquote, his belief that the sun was the center of the universe. He was forced to confess that it was actually the sun that moved around the earth because that's what the priests were saying. And when all was said and done, Galileo was condemned by the church, convicted of heresy, spent the last 10 years of his life under house arrest. And it wasn't until the 20th century that the church admitted they were wrong and Galileo was right and he wasn't actually a heretic. This is a cautionary tale. This isn't just mere history. This is a cautionary tale about what happens when people violate or question conventional wisdom. And unfortunately, we don't necessarily put people in jail for questioning authority, usually anyway. I'm sure there's some people in jail for doing that. But for the most part, we don't, we don't torture and put people in jail when they question authority. But we still do laugh at them and we marginalize them and we dismiss our most controversial visionaries like Dr. Wallach, who dare to question mainstream dogma, especially when it comes to questions of health. Have you been following this nonsense? that is spewing from Washington about Obamacare and the Affordable Health Care Act as if it was drugs and doctors and insurance companies that keep us healthy. This is what the, the meta message is, the hidden message is of Obamacare, that you need the medical model to stay healthy. And that if we don't have a poor, affordable health care, affordable health care, we can't stay healthy. That's the message of this Obamacare boondoggle, and it is a boondoggle. It, the Obamacare, Affordable, Health, Affordable Care Act, whatever you want to call it, is simply a way to transfer money from individuals, that's us, to the medical model. And I'm not saying you don't need catastrophic insurance. We probably do need catastrophic health insurance. The problem is from a day-to-day -day health standpoint, the Affordable Health Care Act, your doctor, the medical model, have absolutely nothing to do with good health. On the other hand, supplementation, nutrition have everything to do with good health, particularly when it comes to protection and particularly around what we've been talking about here, the, the molecule glutathione. Glutathione has thousands of times more to do with our health than anything you can get from the Affordable Health Care Act, Affordable Care Act, whatever they're calling it. Glutathione is the body's major detoxifier, as we've been saying and its component cysteine, we talked about that yesterday, the major building block for this uber ultra, super important detoxification molecule. There's a major relationship between glutathione and something called NAC, my favorite, my favorite non-essential nutritional supplement. And then the second building block, NAC is one of the building blocks of glutathione, and the second building block of glutathione is called glutamine. And there's a major relationship between glutathione and cysteine, or NAC, and glutamine. They're all part of the body's built-in anti-poison or anti-toxin or detoxification system. And they can all be used as supplements. NAC can be used as a supplement. Glutamine can be used as a supplement to help detox the body. And glutamine and cysteine, these building blocks for glutathione, are depleted by drugs. They're depleted by the prescription drugs that we get from our doctor that are supposed to get us healthy. And it's bad enough if you're taking an antibiotic or a pain pill in the short term. If you're taking an antibiotic and a pain pill, and sometimes you need them, you are going to be depleting your body of these major detoxification substances, and that's bad enough. But the real problem is when we're taking drugs every day, when we're taking two or three or five or six or 10 or 12 drugs every day, you are completely, completely depleting your body of its major detoxification substances. And there is absolutely no way your health challenge cannot get worse. It will get worse. Think about it. You go to the doctor to get better. He gives you a drug that makes you worse. There's no way that you cannot be shortening your life and depriving yourself of joie de vivre and good health, joy for life and good health by staying on a chronic long-term drug, simply by the fact that you're depleting your body of glutathione, you're depleting your body of glutamine, you're depleting your body of, uh, of cysteine, of its major detoxification elements. Heavy metals do it too. Alcohol does it, cigarette smoke, excitotoxins, food additives, chlorinated water, fluoridated water. We've got so many different ways that we deplete our body of its major detoxification elements in addition to the prescription drugs we take. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. 
we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific Time and 10 to 11 Central. 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Pharmac- uh, BenFuchsArchives.com. You have search engines up at BenFuchsArchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products from brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to get on a good nutritional supplement program, start off with our Beyond Tangy Tangerine, maybe the Healthy Star Pack, which gets you the mighty 90 essential nutrients. You can also check out our Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Selenium, Ultimate Niacin, and our Fucoid Z at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. Call 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it, or you can sign up from our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we're talking glutathione, NAC, NAC, and a building block of glutathione. NAC is one of the building blocks of glutathione. Glutamine is another building block of glutathione. They're all depleted by various things that we do on a regular basis, including take prescription drugs, excitotoxins, which we've been talking about here now for a couple of weeks, food additives, chlorinated water, fluoridated water. It seems like we've created a culture, a, a world that is specifically designed to deplete our body of these very, very important detoxification biochemicals. There's actually a phenomena called low CG syndrome. It stands for low cysteine glutamine syndrome. And it's linked to all kinds of health challenges, cancer, HIV, digestive diseases, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, chronic fatigue syndrome. These are all associated with low CG, low cysteine, low uh, glutamine. Low CG is also found in the body, uh, found after we have stresses, things like major surgeries, injuries, long-term disease, cancer. All of these can deplete the body of these major, major detoxification elements. You can add prescription drugs to the list. Low CG syndrome can cause the body to come, become weakened. It can cause the body to produce less immune cells. It can cause the muscles to deteriorate, the bones to decay toxicity to accumulate, and much of the effects of low CG are probably related to the fact that without CG, you can't make glutathione, which, as I've said, is the primary protection molecule in the body. Nonetheless, cysteine itself plays a major role in keeping the body purified. Cysteine is important because it's a building block of glutathione, but cysteine itself plays a major role in keeping the body purified. There's lots of reasons why cysteine is important, particularly for detoxification, but it's also a building block for proteins. Your skin and your hair and your nails are made up of over 10% cysteine, so when you take your N-acetylcysteine for detoxification, you're also going to be improving skin health and, and hair health and nail health. It's one of the reasons why I include NAC in all my skin health formulations, including my Truth Blemish Repair Complex, which will get you a good dose of N-acetylcysteine. But its cysteine is most known, is, is best known for its role in keeping the body purified as a detoxification substance. If you, it's, it's really easy to get NAC from, as a supplement, but if you want to use foods to get your NAC, high-protein foods are going to get you a lot of cysteine. Not N-acetylcysteine, but cysteine. Meat, pork, poultry, eggs, if you're a vegetarian, garlic has some, onions, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, peppers. Oats, wheat germ. Wheat germ is one of the all-time great vegan or vegetarian health foods. It's a good source of a lot of things, including cysteine. Dairy is a really, really good source of cysteine. Raw, raw cow's milk, especially the whey part. The whey component, whey component is amazing. Whey protein and the whey component of dairy. The whey component of dairy is really where a lot of the good stuff is, including the whey protein. Lots of good stuff in whey protein, including something called lactoferrin, which we've talked about periodically on this program. And, of course, you're also going to get cysteine. All of these bioactive proteins are, are found not just in raw cow's milk, but they're also found in breast milk. And this is why mother's milk, one of the reasons why mother's milk is such a powerful and important immune builder for infants. And this is why breastfeeding is so, so darn important. 
Lactoferrin, by the way, is one of the all-time great immune-boosting molecules. It's been associated with improvements in all kinds of health conditions. It's a been touted as a remedy for acne, for diarrhea, for hep C, for ulcers. In addition to improving our overall immune system functioning, it acts as a growth factor. It can kill bacteria, viruses, yeast, slow down the aging process. Lactoferrin supports a healthy intestinal environment for the all important microbiome. Lactoferrin acts to reduce the likelihood of cancer. Recently, it's been shown that lactoferrin can help stimulate bone growth and improve bone health in the case of osteoporosis. Lactoferrin is also helpful for improving the absorption of iron in the intestine. According to a 2009 article published in the journal Alimentary Pharmacology and Therapeutics, lactoferrin may help protect against H. pylori infections. H. pylori is a bacteria that's been shown to be the cause of stomach ulcers. This is why if you go to the doctor these days with, and uh, he diagnoses you with a stomach ulcer, you're probably going to get an antibiotic. I remember when I, was, when I uh, graduated pharmacy school, when I first started practicing pharmacy, the go-to drug for dealing with uh, ulcers was Zantac or Tagamet because they were suppressing acid, and then about 10 years later, they found out that it wasn't acid suppression that was required, or it wasn't too much acid that caused ulcers. You remember back in the day, they used to say, oh, too much acid causes ulcers. Well, now they know it's the bacteria, H. pylori bacteria, that causes stomach ulcers. And while you may get an antibiotic if you have stomach ulceration, as it turns out, lactoferrin, according to this article anyway, in Elementary Pharmacology and Therapeutics, it turns out that lactoferrin may be a better strategy than antibiotics. And of course, you don't have to deal with bacterial resistance or any of the toxic effects of antibiotics when you use lactoferrin. Lactoferrin, which in addition to being a component of milk, is also found in bile or tears. Uh, tears secretions have lactoferrin in them. You can get it as a supplement. You can get lactoferrin, just straight lactoferrin, pretty cheap, maybe 20 bucks a bottle, 20 to $30 a bottle. You can use whey protein, which is nature's best source of lactoferrin. Cow's milk has some lactoferrin in it too, but unless you get your cow's milk fresh and raw, there are too many problems with store-bought pasteurized, homogenized cow's milk to consider it a health food, even if it does have some lactoferrin in it. But I digress back to our subject at hand, which is my favorite non-essential nutritional supplement, N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine First thing that comes to mind with NAC, and probably the most important thing that comes to mind, is its detoxification properties. A lot of this comes from the fact that it's a chelator, chelating agent. NAC has a little piece of sulfur attached to it, and that sulfur is a magnetic, acts like a magnet, has a magnetic property which allows it to attract toxins, particularly heavy metals, out of the body. And if you're worried about mercury poisoning, we talked about this a couple days ago, if you're worried about mercury poisoning, if you're having your mercury amalgams taken out, NAC is an absolute must. If you are at the dentist's office and you're having your, your uh, amalgams taken out, your dentist better be prescribing or at least suggesting NAC for you, N-acetylcysteine. If you take NAC regularly, you'll be able to protect your body from mercury and you'll be able to protect your body from lead and excess iron and copper and even the ionizing effects of x-rays. NAC is protective against x-rays. So if you're traveling a lot, you're going through that x-ray machine, take your NAC before and after. Take it before exposure to mercury or toxicity or x-rays and after. There's other chelating agents too, by the way. Garlic is a chelating agent. MSM is a chelating agent. MSM sulfur, that is. Selenium is a chelating agent. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll return right after this. My husband. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844 236 6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you at 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or supplementation, our truth skin health products, comments, success stories, if you uh, have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, and acetylcysteine detoxification 844-236-6010 is our number and we do have lines open we'll get your calls here momentarily from the journal of clinical investigation glutamine supplements can suppress reactivation of the herpes simplex virus for you guys dealing with cold sores or genital herpes glutamine is an a must an absolutely must have supplement glutamine is a su great supplement for for everybody i mean this stuff is absolutely amazing it's a source of cellular energy the body can use glutamine as a source of energy uh, like it uses glucose, but you don't mess up your insulin. 
especially for the intestine. Anybody dealing with any digestive health issues would do well to supplement with glutamine. If you're dealing with any kind of immune immune health issues, it's a, a glutamine is a must supplement, must have supplement. Glutamine is a great supplement to protect your body from cancer, or if you have cancer. Glutamine supplementation is extra important if you're using prescription drugs or if you're a cigarette smoker or if you're drinking a lot of alcohol. Just an absolute, absolute stunning supplement. And according to this article in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, it is also helpful for folks who are dealing with the herpes virus. People who have herpes know cold sores, know that um, they're more likely to have cold sores, to get cold sores when they're under stress or when their body is somehow being depleted of nutrition or if they're eating a lot of sugar all of which can have a negative effect on glutamine levels. And by the way, it's not just glutamine that will support the immune system for folks who are dealing with herpes. And shingles is a type of herpes too. So if, you have, uh, if you're concerned about the shingles virus, you might also want to be taking glutamine, but also N-acetylcysteine and selenium, all of which are involved in the production of the glutathione molecule. So glutamine, I like glutamine powder. I always do, uh, I, I do maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon every day, and I always do a little bit extra glutamine if I, if I feel like I'm getting a cold or I feel like I'm somehow run down. Glutamine powder is really inexpensive. You can get glutamine in whey protein. Whey protein is nature's, probably nature's best source of glutamine. So if you want to just do, uh, if you don't want to go out and get the supplement, make sure you're getting enough whey protein. Whey, of course, whey protein also is a good source of all the detoxification elements that we've been talking about, including cysteine and lactoferrin. From the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, sun effects on skin reveal eczema therapy clues. It turns out that exposure to sunlight will reduce night, will, uh, will produce the, uh, the molecule nitric oxide, which has an anti-inflammatory effect and can have some benefits for folks who are dealing with eczema. We've known for years that the sun is important for folks who are dealing with psoriasis. But now it turns out the sun can also help reduce the, some of the symptoms of eczema. Sun is absolutely important absolutely unspeakably important when it comes to good health. Staying away from the sun is one of the stupidest idea, stupider ideas, dumber ideas that you hear from the mainstream medical model, including your dermatologist. I still talk to people who are afraid of the sun, who stay out of the sun, who think it's much better for them to put a toxic sunscreen on than it is to get some sun exposure. I think this is appropriate considering tomorrow is the longest day of the year. The sun is at its, at its uh, strongest tomorrow, the summer solstice. So if you're dealing with eczema, Get yourself in the sun. If you're dealing with psoriasis, get yourself in the sun. A good tan is not just uh, attractive to look at, it's also important for good health. Don't want to burn. That's where sun exposure gets a bad rap. You don't want to burn. It is never good to burn, but making sure you're getting 10 to 15 minutes a day of sun is definitely an important health strategy. I love this one. This is from the Journal of Ophthalmology. By the way, we'll get your phone calls here in a sec if you're on hold. 844-236-6010 is our number. This is from the Journal of Ophthalmology. A new study suggests that most people with acute conjunctivitis, also known as pink eye, and 6 million people a year get pink eye. A new study suggests that they're getting the wrong treatment. About 60% of patients are prescribed antibiotic eye drops, even though, quote, antibiotics are rarely necessary to treat this common eye infection, unquote. And the reason I think this is important is because it highlights this idea that our trust in our doctors is misplaced. Just because somebody has a medical degree does not mean they know how to treat our health. And we see this all the time. We just trust our doctors. Well, he's a doctor. He knows what he's doing. If he tells me to take this prescription, he's right. No, it doesn't work that way. Doctors are nice people. They want to do well. But just because somebody has a medical degree does not mean he understands how to use prescriptions or when to use prescriptions. And this is highlighted by the study that showed up in, uh, in the uh, journal Ophthalmology, the Journal of the American Academy of Ophthalmology. 60% of people get antibiotic eye drops for a health challenge that doesn't need antibiotics. We see this all over. I remember when I f first started practicing pharmacy, people would be put on tetracycline for acne and they'd stay on tetracycline for months and years even though tetracycline doesn't do anything for acne, except for maybe suppress inflammation a little bit. I'm not saying doctors are bad people. I'm just saying we don't want to necessarily trust somebody who tells us we got to take this medicine or follow this particular health pr procedure. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Curtis in West Virginia. Welcome to the Bright Side. Ah, uh, okay. You got Curtis again. I talked to you a couple of weeks ago, and you put a lot of time in with me, and I'm not going to take up the caller's times too much. But 
I have been told by the doctors to come off of testosterone. All these doctors keep telling me that. I cannot. For some reason, um, pharmacist Ben, you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. For some reason, before I got on my testosterone, and I've been low since 09, I went back and checked some of my records. I've had low testosterone ever since I had MRSA for the second time in my ear. I had herpes zoster at the same time. I've had low testosterone ever since then. I do good on it, and I took your advice, and I took the zinc of D3 and B12 and a couple other substances, and I've done a little better. But when it comes to two weeks, to take my shot. If I don't take it, I go downhill. And this week I didn't make two weeks. But I become severely dehydrated. I've been in the hospital many a times from last summer uh, to all this winter. And I'm always told I'm severely dehydrated. This are is you what not, happens. Are you so not what? drinking water? Are you not drinking water? Why would you be dehydrated? Are you sweating oh, a lot? Are you oh, working out? What are you doing? Oh, sir, I drink more water than two or three people a day. I drink plenty of that, and I and I stay away from all the bad stuff I've heard about. But I become off balance. The left side of my face starts to get numb, and I start to get weak after about two or three days. And this week, I didn't make my two weeks. I had to take my shot yesterday. And I'm starting now to start coming around. But why would I get so severely dehydrated without Testosterone. Well, t testosterone is very important for a lot of things, for building cells and for building bones and for building tissue. I'm not sure what the dehydration has, uh, why, why you'd be dehydrated if you, if you didn't use the testosterone. But wh what's the problem with the, t the testosterone? Why are they telling you not to use it? Oh, my. I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention all the ingredients in this, but one of them is the aspartic acid. I might not pronounce it right. Aspartic, aspartic acid? acid? Aspartic acid? It's an amino acid, and okay. it's used in aspartame. I don't know. It, mm. I just have so many people tell me, doctors tell me, don't take testosterone, but I feel good when I take it. How about using testosterone cream? Have you thought of that? Uh, no, uh, George Cunney won't pay for it, and you don't explain to me about to the hang on, uh, Curtis. Hang. We got to take a break. Don't go away. Okay. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay. We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We're talking to Curtis in West Virginia. You there, Curtis? Uh, yes, sir. One other thing I want to mention: Can any well water? I live about 15 miles from a pulp mill. If my sister's wood, and I've heard some wells have been bad with chemicals. Can anything yeah, you, come off the well that might cause this problem? Uh, well water can definitely be contaminated, and I, I don't know. You have to check check with your local, whoever takes care of the water down there. You might want to check with no, them I about contamination. Well. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to a lab and I'll get them to come out and check it. It's no well water. It's not. It's not. It, it, the water table could be contaminated, and well water can certainly be a problem. But I'm more concerned about the dehydration issue. Here's a couple ideas for you. Okay, number okay. one. Uh, you may consider reducing your dose of testosterone and then replacing it with things that help you build testosterone, things like vitamin E and zinc, or vitamin, not necessarily vitamin E for building testosterone, but vitamin E has a, has, has a positive effect on testosterone. Vitamin E, zinc, protein, amino acids, uh, those can all help, arginine in particular, those can all help you with your testosterone system and then reducing your dose of the testosterone. See if you find a sweet spot on the dose of testosterone where you can lower the dose, you still get the benefits of the testosterone, but you don't get any of the, uh, any, any of the uh, uh, toxicity that your doctors are worried about. I personally like the cream, by the way, better than the, better than the, um, than the injectable. And you, should find, you can find a compounding pharmacist who can make it a lot cheaper for you. I know you said you're paying like $200 or something crazy for the cream. It shouldn't be that, that expensive. The next thing you might want to consider is reducing or uh, using nutrients that can help lower estrogen levels. Things like DIM, DIM, or I3C. They have anti-estrogenic properties. Also, um, 
a uh, plant called Chrysin, C-H-R-Y-S-I-N, has anti-estrogen effects. Another herb called maca, M-A-C-A, has a- anti-estrogen effects. And so all of these strategies will help you lower your dose of testosterone where you might get the benefits of the testosterone without running into any of the problems that your doctor is that your doctor's talking about. And that might help reduce any of the, um, reduce the dehydration. Although I got to tell you, I don't know if, I, I can't really think of why using, uh, or using you said, using your testosterone caused dehydration or getting off your testosterone caused you to become dehydrated? Okay, they're not telling me using testosterone is causing it. Yeah, they're just I can't... saying they don't know why I'm becoming dehydrated when I come off of it. Are you going to the bathroom a lot? Are you urinating a lot? Oh my, yes. I have no trouble urinating. I, I, like I said, I drink three or four quarts of liquids a day. They're mostly my water, mixed 50-50 of coffee water, and some lemonade that I make up on my own. And I'll drink no sodas. I don't take anything. Now, I do drink water when I go out to places like I shouldn't go, as uh, restaurants or something. I'll drink their water that's supposed to be filtered. Did you say but, use honey? Uh, you said you're using but, honey? But anyhow, I will be seeing, I'll be seeing uh, the doctor next week, neurologist, and I'm going to go all over this with him. But I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to first have my water checked, and then I'm going to try more nutrients and try and to do that. That was the next question. If I work hard, when I feel really good, I can go out here and work like a horse when I'm on testosterone. Does that working hard uses up your testosterone? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the more the more energy you're expending, the more testosterone you're going to be expending. Absolutely, but that it shouldn't that shouldn't make too much of a difference. Try lowering your dose. You might be taking too high a dose, in the sense that you don't need as much. It may not be toxic at that high a dose, but you may not need as much. And okay. always, we want to take the low the lowest dose you can, and then in combination with the nutrients as well as the uh, the uh, anti estrogen nutrients, the the maca and the wild nettle and uh, grapeseed extract. These are called aromatase inhibitors, DIM and I three C and broccoli and uh, Brussels sprouts, cruciferous vegetables. All of these have anti-estrogen or estrogen blocking effects that may allow you to lower your dose on the testosterone. If you, can, if you do find out why getting off the testosterone causes dehydration, I'd love to know because I can't think of why okay. that would be. All right, well, Curtis, I got to go. Thank you so okay, much, I'm gonna buddy. Take your advice. I'm going to take your advice and I'll let you know. All right, Thank have a great day, Curtis. Thank you, my man. All right, let's go to Ron in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Good morning, Ron. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? Hey. Oh, not much. Well, I have a hyperthyroid. Okay, I never, I haven't been diagnosed, but I have all the symptoms of somebody else at work who has it. Tell, give me some of, of the symptoms. Tell me some of the symptoms. Uh, but when I have wheat, my so I have sensitivity to wheat, and my tongue swells if I have, you know, kind of a, a lot of it. I don't know what. Like, if I have three, two, three days in a row. Ron, Ron, what are your hy- Ron, what are your Ron, hang on, buddy, hang on, stop for a second. What are your hyperthyroid symptoms? Um, bulging eyes, and okay. cracks on my tongue with my okay. tongue swells and I have wheat. Okay. And an easy uh, cold. You know, are you sweating cold. a lot? Are you sweating a lot? Oily skin, sweating, that kind of thing. Yeah, but it, it seems like when I you know have enough iodine, like I have. Um, the dietary liquid iodine I get, and then if I have seaweed or um, uh, what is that fish in the can? Um, sardines. Yep, sardines. Then then I'm then I'm, I'm pretty good. Enough. I drink enough water. I don't these symptoms, you know, go away. But I tried creatine before, and I tried glutamine, and I can feel my throat swell from both of those. And I even kind of glutamine. Ron, glutamine makes your throat swell? Yeah, it feels like my, my throat is swollen. Sometimes if I drink water, when it feels like that, I'll just kind of like, the water's not going down. I kind of like, almost like, you know. Make Sounds like you're having swell. a digestive health issue, more an intestinal issue. And that can also cause a thyroid problem too, by the way. So the, the thyroid is secondary to the intestine. Thyroid functions, first of all, hypothyroidism usually involves autoimmunity, which involves the intestine, and also 
uh, digestive toxins that get into the blood can, can cause a hyperthyroid effect too. So the thyroid, you get hyperthyroidism from, from uh, digestive toxicity or hypothyroidism. In other words, Graves' disease or, or Hashimoto's thyroid can both be caused by intestinal problems. So here's what I would be doing if I were you, Ron. If you could do a three-day fast, if you can stop eating for three days or even two days, or a Swero V cleanse where you do a half a bottle of Swero V every hour and you don't eat any food, and your thyroid calms down, you're going to know you've got the relation, your thyroid problem is related to the intestine, is related to digestion. And then you're going to start ent- using foods uh, uh, strategically, putting one food into the system and seeing what happens. It sounds to me like your problems are in the digestive tract. All the, all the aller- all allergic responses that you're describing, the, the throat swelling, et cetera, when you eat certain foods or take certain supplements, that tells me you're not digesting, you're not absorbing nutrients correctly. So I would be focusing on digestive health. You probably want to, once you start eating again, you probably want to um, start using fermented foods, fermented vegetables, ferment, uh, fermented dairy, things like yogurt and kefir. And then uh, also it would probably be a good idea to use a probiotic supplement like the Ultimate Nightly Essence if you're not already using that. And then anything else you could do for digestive support, things like uh, grind, grinding up flax seeds to make sure that you're getting enough fiber and then also using apple cider vinegar with your meals and perhaps digestive enzymes with your meals as well. I'd be focusing on the digestive tract, in other words, and then if you, when you experience your hyperthyroid symptoms, the bulging eyes, the sweating, uh, the oily skin, if you have anxiety issues or you have insomnia issues, calming the body down with slow, deep breathing techniques. It sounds simple. It sounds almost silly, but slow, deep breathing, oxygenating the body, Providing enough oxygen into the blood is a wonderful way to calm everything down, activate the so-called parasympathetic or relaxation nervous system, and slow down thyroid function, or, or relax thyroid function, I should say, if you're hyperthyroid. In other words, focus on the digestive system, number one. Focus on relaxation strategies, especially slow, deep breathing techniques, number two. All right, I got to motivate, Ron. I want to get one more call in, if I can. You got, you got... How, often, how often should I do my breathing? How often what? How often should I do the breathing? You said slow twice breathing. a day, five at least, at least twice a day, five minutes, five to ten minutes a day on the couch, sitting on the couch, slow deep breathing, at least twice a day. But if you could do it as often as you can, as often as you can think of it, when you're waiting in line at the bank or at the store or when you're in rush hour traffic, anytime you think about it, slow deep breathing. If you only do it for once, for one cycle, even if you only do it for like one slow deep breath, uh, one slow deep inhale, and one slow deep exhale or one, one powerful exhale, that's plenty to relax the body. But if you do it for five minutes, you will be so... There's no way you can have hyperthyroid sim, uh, symptomology if you sit on the couch and practice slow, deep breathing for five minutes. Now, it may come back, but if you do it a couple times a day, you'll activate the parasympathetic nervous system nicely, the relaxation nervous system nicely. You'll oxygenate, oxygenate nicely, re- reduce your hyperthyroid symptoms, plus add years to your life, fight cancer, uh, just overall an overall panacea, an overall good health panacea. It's all about oxygen, you know? We talk about nutrition all the time, but fundamentally, it's all about oxygen. Oxygen is the key to good health. Oxygen, as well as carbon dioxide, uh, blowing off carbon dioxide, key to good health. That's why deep breathing is so important. It sounds simple, but it's just such a powerful, powerful health strategy. That's what the Bright Side is all about, folks. There's all of these powerful, wonderful health strategies we can employ without doctors, without diagnostics, without hospitals, without Obamacare. We can do it all ourselves. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.